Easter Lesson 2, Son of Man is Crucified. Today's lesson comes from Luke 22, verses 47 through 53, and chapters 23, verses 26 through 49. Hey guys, do you know what holiday is coming up? Did you guess Easter? If you did, you are absolutely correct. And do you guys remember what to say when somebody says, He is risen? You say, He is risen indeed because that is the truth. But before we go on to the lesson, let's start with maps. This is the only time where you don't have to raise your hand if you know the answer. If you know the answer, just shout it out. What is this big body of water here? There's two names. The Great Sea and the Mediterranean Sea. What about this smaller body of water here? That's the Sea of Galilee. What about this river that's flowing down? That's the Jordan River. What about this sea right here? I think everybody knows this one. That's the Dead Sea. What about this big body of land here? There's three names. Canaan, the Promised Land, and Israel. Did you get all three of them? What about this city here? Jerusalem. And then there's a country down here where Moses led the Israelites out of. Pharaoh was from there. That's right, Egypt. Let's do one more. There's a city here where the walls came tumbling down. You guessed it, it's Jericho. Did you get all of them? If you didn't, that's okay. We're going to do it again next week. Time for review. Let's try to review what we learned last week. What was the special day that Jesus and his disciples celebrated? It was Passover. What did they sacrifice on Passover? They sacrificed a lamb. Who would become the new Passover lamb? It would be Jesus Christ. How do the bread and the wine remind us about Jesus? The bread reminds us of Jesus' body given for believers. The wine reminds us of the new covenant, meaning promise, in his blood Jesus makes with believers. Both remind us he died to give us true life. Now on to the lesson. After the Passover meal, Jesus went to the garden to pray, a garden called Gethsemane. He took Peter, John, and James with him and asked them to pray with him. Jesus knew that what he was about to do was his father's will, or what his father desired of him, and that gave him a lot of strength and comfort. After they were done praying, an armed mob came to arrest him, but Jesus did not act violently. He responded peacefully. The Israel leaders illegally condemned him. There was no legitimate or real witness that had a real testimony to condemn Jesus. They made up lies wanting to crucify him, but he responded with truth. During this time outside, Peter denied him. How many times did he deny him? That's right, three times. And then after the third time, do you guys remember what happened? That's right. The rooster crowed, and he remembered. He remembered Jesus telling him that he was going to deny Jesus. The soldiers beat Jesus, whipped him, spit on him, and made fun of him. They put on a purple robe, a crown of thorns, and made fun of him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! Jesus grew very weak. He had to travel a long way to get to the place of his crucifixion. Later, he became so weak that he had to have somebody carry the cross for him. During this time, while people were mocking him and insulting him, Jesus had compassion. He had compassion on all those people, the people that mocked him. Jesus even prayed for them. Then. 
he was crucified. Crucified with two other thieves. And Jesus granted mercy to one of the criminals on the cross. One of the criminals came to believe in Jesus, and he was saved that day. Finally, after the skies darkened, he gave up his life. Because Jesus was righteous to the very end, he was able to be a perfect sacrifice. He died as a righteous man in the place of the unrighteous, bearing God's wrath against sin. The Father immediately showed his approval by ripping the temple curtain. The veil was torn. We were not blocked away from God anymore. Through Jesus, we could have fellowship with the Holy God. God accepted Jesus' sinless sacrifice as sufficient, meaning good enough to restore peace between God and man. Now, any sinner who trusts in the sinless Savior can be clothed with his righteousness and enter God's holy presence. Isn't that good news? That's great news. And I pray that you do believe in this great, amazing good news, that you would believe in him and accept him as your Lord and Savior. Hope you guys have a lot of fun doing crafts, however many crafts you desire to do. Hope you guys have a great week this week because he is risen. <laughs> he is risen indeed.